She's married to Australia's R&B pop sensation Guy Sebastian, but Jules tends to run in her own lane when it comes to life. Want to know what all that means? We're here at beautiful Bondi Beach to talk to stylist Jules Sebastian to find out just that. So the interviewer becomes the interviewee. Yes, I know. Tell us a little about the Jules Sebastian story from the girl from Adelaide to now. Oh my gosh, okay. I feel very old, so there's a lot to say. <laughs> Born and raised in Adelaide, very, you know, normal, average, everyday sort of a life. I met a boy, of course, as you do, and, um, and he happened to win a singing competition. And that took him to Sydney. Um, so we met in Adelaide and, yeah. and then he Because you grew Sydney. up with, with your husband and married him eventually after yes. 10 long years of yes. dating. Did you ever think, oh my God, is he ever going to pop the question? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, <laughs> I was happy to, to lock it down <laughs> and get married. Get the job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been married for seven years now, just gone seven years. Yeah, Two fantastic. babies and just Never in Sydney. Mind. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Because you're a stylist, so how did your, um, I guess, career start off and why did you choose the fashion in industry? I, I didn't really know what a stylist was growing up. I, I, I read magazines and I, and I, I liked fashion but I, didn't, I did not, didn't know that was an actual job yeah. that you could get paid for. Yeah. I didn't know it was a career path until actually when I moved to Sydney, which was a bit later on in my mm. life, I was 26 when I moved, um, I went to fashion school and that really opened my eyes to what the fashion industry was actually about and all the different paths that you could take in that industry. I guess you, you started off styling Guy. How was that? Because it's always, I think, awkward working with your partner. Yeah, I mean, when you say started off, it, it was my kind of my big break, I suppose, yeah. into a legit job. I remember the moment where it came together and, and Guy was doing his album cover for mm. one of his albums and asked if I could do the styling and yeah, I was I was like, okay, this is this, this is, is it. Break. This yeah. is it. If yeah, I yeah. fail, then that's it's over. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll never do this Everyone's again. Everyone's going to be looking at me. Yeah. yeah. So thank God it worked out mm. and um, I think I did a good job yeah. <laughs> because I was invited back and then from there. That's where um, I started to style a whole lot of different music artists. So what is it that you intend to deliver as a fashion stylist? Good question. Um, I think ultimately as a stylist, your job is to make that person look their very absolute mm. best. If a person walks out the door and goes about their day and they feel great, yeah. that's a tick for me. Yeah. That's that's a job well done because mm. that's really, really what, what it's, it's about. about. Yeah. Because yeah. you've worked on um, the show Channel 7's Bringing Sexy Back. Yes. That must have been an amazing experience to, to watch that whole transition, I guess, from, it was it a 12 week process, like from when they, they joined the show to at the end when they've yep. lost their weight and you get to come in and you get to style them and you get to make them feel special again. Yeah. Tell me about that whole experience because I reckon yeah. that would be sensational. It was, it really was. Actually, it was a bit crazy because I just had a baby three weeks prior <laughs> to being on set. So I felt like I was a little bit on their journey. You know, yeah. I, had, I just yep. had my second baby carrying a little bit of weight myself and trying to you know manage a, a newborn on yeah. set and had a two-year-old and yeah, I was like yeah. Yeah, what am I doing um, but I, I felt I felt a little bit connected to them because mm. I was on a similar sort of a path um, I got them at the very end of it and I got to just dress them up and make them look really pretty mm. but it was really fun because we did the full makeup we cut their hair and yeah. coloured and yeah. did the makeup and because it'd be a bit touching we did you find yourself a little emotional because you know you've just watched them go through this whole big massive journey journey and and to see the end result was it an emotional I cried in every episode <laughs> every single episode and you know what made me cry the most is when when they had kids oh, and their yeah. kids would see them for the first time come out and they were crying yeah. I could I uh, I was on every single episode yeah. The producer's like, really, Jules? So what would be one of your biggest fashion faux pas? My own. Yeah. <laughs> oh, where do I start? Um, probably mostly with my hair. 
I've had some terrible hair, yeah. Um, I had a pixie cut once, and that was not a good choice. Don't have a face for a pixie cut. <laughs> um, but fashion-wise, oh, I mean, puffer jackets, <laughs> like, but bad kind of ski ones, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. that yeah. just... Like the, puffer the jackets, white, like, big yeah, Michelin. Yeah, mine were more like baby blue and yeah. red, like together, puffer, maybe not good. Do, if you are in doubt, take it off and start again. Never leave the house feeling uncomfortable in what you're wearing. Don't wear anything that's too tight or anything that is too short or any heel that is too high that will restrict your movement in any way in getting about your day. Do be true to yourself. If you're a tomboy, dress like a tomboy. If you're a super girly girl, dress like a super girly girl. Be who you are. Always be true to yourself and dress that way. Don't spend too much money on clothes if you don't have to. You can look a million bucks without paying a million bucks. Try and piece together things that look expensive. That's always my key. Where, where'd you get that? Oh, I got it at somewhere not expensive. Do you believe that there's a work-life balance? And if so, what's your work-life balance? Oh, the million dollar question. Yeah. Uh, yes, I do. I do. And I can say that now that I've had three years of trying to find it. <laughs> I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old, uh, two boys. So uh, I truly believe that you can find it. Mm. Um, but you have to sacrifice some things for other things. Yep. I understand for... Some people, it's, it's not an option. They, mm. they have to work and, and yep. you know, it's hard to find the balance. But I've managed to find a way to mostly be with my kids, but also work and do the things. And that has come at a cost, of course, yep. because you have to say no to some opportunities in, in your work that you would love to do or would be a great opportunity to push you forward. But mm. I always have to think, my ba they're my babies and, yeah. and they're the most important things yeah. and you know uh, those are the things I'll never regret is is saying yes to them yeah so exactly. yeah I, I think I found it probably <laughs> not let's be honest <laughs> it just works <laughs> your, your new project's Tea with Jewels yes which has just launched a couple of months ago tell us a bit about that project I just had this idea one day <laughs> that um, no I think I've always loved drinking tea with my friends it's always kind of been a thing since we were teenagers, you know, come over for a cup of tea. Um, and it's where you kind of sit down with your girlfriends and you hash it all out, you, yep. you get it all off your chest, or you know, you talk about what's coming up or what you've been through or whatever. Um, so it's always been a kind of a thing with, with my friends and I. And I thought, what an amazing concept for people that I meet in the industry yeah. who are awesome and so inspiring. Um, I thought, why? I'd love to share their stories with, mm. with everybody and just sit down and have a cup of tea with them. And, and you created a little stir a couple of months back when you actually interviewed your husband. Yes. And um, how did that all come about <laughs> and why did it, do you think it's created such a big stir in the industry? Well, it created a bit of a stir because we had a little bit of a fight. <laughs> Was it real or not? Was no, it, it wasn't real. It wasn't real. No. When I asked him to do tea with Jules, I thought, there, there's an, how weird me sitting down asking Guy Sebastian about his life. I've been in his life <laughs> since we were 14 years old. You know, like, there's nothing yeah. I can ask him that is going to, you know. Surprise me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's so weird. It's going to be too serious and just crazy. So we, we literally just sat down and just went. It was pretty unplanned. Yep. I had a few questions up my sleeve, but we just... We just I can't believe how straight faced you kept throughout that whole. Yeah, the I got in thing. the zone. Yeah, I got in the zone. Go the fro. What did you do to your fro? Really? That's your question. That's your opening question. I've been asked that a million times. It's um, really, I cut it. it uh, I, when I was on Idol, I had an afro, and people used to, you know, they'd yell out "Go the fro" and all that sort of stuff, and. Um, yeah, it was a pretty big deal, I guess, back then. It was on bus stops and all that sort of thing. But then I thought, I want people to take my music seriously, so I cut it. So you think by cutting the fro, now people will take your music seriously? 
Well, it's less gimmicky. It's not like they're gonna go off. Go the short back and sides. It seems to have worked out for you, so well done on that. For us, I guess. <laughs> it, yeah, you called yeah. it a little bit of a stir, you're right. <laughs> You've got a bit of a, a saying that you like to stick to your own lane. Oh, yes. What does that mean? Well, I think that everybody is who they are. It mm. sounds so simple, but I think everyone should just stick to their own lane and not try and be somebody that they're not. Mm. I truly believe that it always works out best if you're just being who you are. Mm. And I, I've, I've really just stuck to that, not really knowing that that's been my rule of life, but I've stuck to that pretty much my whole life. And who I am is who I am. I can't yeah. change it. I, can't, I can always try and be better at things and, and get my skills up to scratch and, and study and, and, you know, yeah. always refine my craft and my skills but yeah. I can't change who I am mm. and um, I think that if you're always trying to look to other people and, and and look to what others are doing and try to be somebody else then it never actually works out. Yeah. So what is next for Jules Sebastian? You know I think just more of the same stuff. I, I am just the sort of girl that kind of has a plan. Um, I stick to somewhat of a, you know, plan, but um, I just, whatever comes my way, I'm so happy to, to give a go. And um, I'm, I'm loving doing TV jewels. That's really, really fun. I, I'm, I'm just having the best time ever. And who knew it was gonna be, you know, yeah, such a success and, and who knew the people I would meet and all, I just, yeah. it's mind blowing. So Are definitely Are we gonna see you on TV again soon? I don't know. I actually really don't know that. I don't know. I'm just making my own show yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. I grew up in Adelaide. The first thing I do when I wake up is? Probably complain or whinge. <laughs> if I could be better at anything, it would be? Cooking. <laughs> I'm my happiest when? I'm in my pyjamas with my Ugg boots on, with a cup of tea, in complete silence, or watching really tacky reality TV. <laughs> when I'm not working, I am? With my babies. Most people don't know that I? Most people don't know that I am a fiend for chocolate. Oh, fiend. My most annoying habit is? Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm sure Guy would be able to answer that in two seconds. The most, do you know what, I think I'm, I, I, I'm very slow. I actually annoy myself when I see myself back. I talk really slow and I pause a lot. That annoys me about myself. Why do I pause? I say something and pause. <laughs> like, it's just annoying. My hidden talent is? Oh, uh, <laughs> No, I don't know if I have one. I don't know if I have a hidden talent. Oh, what a failure. <laughs> I don't, I don't no. think I've got one. Thanks for watching iStyle TV and don't forget to subscribe to iStyle TV on YouTube, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. I'm Tam Wrigley and I'll see you next time. I'm trying to think what, what was what I used to wear. Do you know what I'd love to see come back? Mm. Corduroy. Corduroy. Mm. Corduroy flares. <laughs> Brown. Brown ones. <laughs>